everyone. It's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Yesterday, I forgot to say that, and Doyle, he noticed. He said, I wanted to know, are you still from Western New York? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am. Today, I was um, answering my comments, and I found that it was getting harder and harder to read them because I needed to put my regular glasses back on. And I had taken my regular glasses off a while ago because the the arm on it was broken. Your newer glasses. My newer. They're newer. Yeah, these are the newer ones, but they're old, but still newer than newer than the ones I was wearing. These are the ones I was wearing. These right here. And they are lovely, dirty too. Oh, I can see that they're dirty now because I can see. <laughs> so sad. I put these glasses on and I went to put my lipstick on that I always put on for my videos except for the times when I forget. And I go, my goodness, I have a lot of wrinkles. And Jim told me to take my glasses back off. <laughs> and then I said, I have, he says, gee whiz, I didn't smoke. How come I've got lines around my mouth? And he goes, he told me it was because of my whistling. And I used to say, and they used to say, the old ladies at the county home used to say, that's right, whistling girls and cackling hens always come to some bad end. And I did I used to whistle a lot. So that probably is the puckering that I did. Hopefully there, there's no bad end. No, I hope there's no bad end. But anyways, that's the saying that they used to say. And my putting, taking off my glasses reminds me of Rusty's little poem there that said that I, well, let me have it a minute. I can't remember what it said, but it's had stuff. I don't know how it was written. It was kind of neat. It says, my face in the mirror isn't wrinkled and drawn. Well, they didn't have my glasses. My house isn't dirty and the cobwebs are gone. My garden looks lovely and so does my lawn. Heck, I might never put my glasses on. I'd be better off without those glasses too because I can see too much. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Alzheimer's and dementia. They are different, but they're the same, but you usually get the Alzheimer's and then you develop the dementia. And some there's people just get the some dementia. Some people part just of it, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but um, there's stages and there's usually about seven stages to it. The first stage, no worry. Oh, it's normal, no problem. Nobody would know if you were in the first no, stage. No, they wouldn't know even. Then second stage is usually mild. It's a little bit mild. And memory lapses. But you know what? We all have memory lapses as you age. That's a natural sign of aging, so people still wouldn't know it. And forgetting familiar family names. Well, I know when I see some of my relatives that I haven't seen in a long time, I have to think, gosh, what is their name? Because you haven't seen them in a long time, so you don't remember their name. Um, then there's stage three. Stage three is a mild cognitive decline, which means you you got a mild forgetfulness again, which is typical. We forget. Difficult learning new things. Well, that we all do too. Because have you ever tried to learn Spanish if you don't speak Spanish? I have, and I don't speak Spanish, and I don't do well remembering it. If you put it in a song, I might remember it. Or anything new. Not just anything, no language, yeah. In, you know, you anything. could be anything. You could be learning to do, like people that have learned, tried to learn to crochet and just can't do it. Or knit, and they just can't do it. Or maybe carve. Like, have you ever seen those chains where the guy's wood carving is, and they're linked, and they're all linked together, but it's all solid wood? I couldn't do that, so that that mm, could be a could be a sign, but could not be a sign. Fourth stage is where you have um, where you start to really recognize maybe that the person has a little bit of a problem because they they forget their their history of their own life. They forget things that maybe have have difficulty managing tasks like they they have a trouble going shopping or. Um, current events they're not interested in current events so when you get to eight, stage five now that's the stage that we really really started to notice my mom 
was having trouble. I noticed it prior to that, but family members were in denial. A lot of times family members are in denial. They don't want to believe that they're, they're declining in any way. And um, she had, um, where she, I made up a little card thing with all of our telephone numbers on it because the only telephone number she seemed to remember was mine. And she couldn't remember anybody else's number where she used to know all these numbers by heart and that was going away. Um, her day-to-day -day tasks, she could do certain things if it was, it was like if it was the same thing every day, she like wore a groove. She didn't, if you had to waver from that groove, she would have a difficulty. And so that was um, stage five where they're becoming to be moderately severe in their cognitive. They start to wander and they, um, at that point she was wandering and she couldn't find her way back, but sometimes she could find her way back. She would start the car but forget how to turn it off or something like that she would do. So it was getting to be more severe. And when she got to stage six, now that was where it was really bad because now she really didn't know how to start the car and she didn't know how to turn it off. And so that was when she stopped driving. And it took, actually it took us to have a police officer come to the house. She had was driving one day and she went and she cut in front of a young driver that was learning to drive. And the sad part is that's the same house she ended up at thinking it was my house because she got lost one time. She drove past my house. I have to probably tell two stories here yeah. in the same because yeah. it's kind of connected. They're she drove connected. past my house and ended up at this lady's house. And just a few days before that, she had cut in front of this lady and her granddaughter. She was teaching her how to drive and she'd cut in front of her, went over the curb thing in front of our little store that we have in town and had no clue that she even went over the curb, had no clue that she cut somebody off. And the lady had called me to tell me that, you know, this is a problem. We've got to get her off the road. And we were waiting for the doctor to give the motor vehicle office the statement saying that she should not be driving. So this lady had a friend that was a police officer and said, would you like me to have him come down and maybe talk to her? And I said, that'd be great. So the police officer showed up at the door and he said to, to her, I understand that you are um, still driving. She says, yes. And I go very slow, which was true. She went very slow and she would turn in front of you very slow. And she'd turn out, in fact, she wasn't allowed to turn out of a certain road because she was very she slow. Hands. She couldn't do any she right could, hand. No, she could not left, do any left, left hand. hand. That's right. She because couldn't, she couldn't the cross the highway. So anyways, he said to her, would you like us to give you a road test? Maybe, you know, and she said, oh, sure, that would be fine. So he was going to come back and give her a road test. Well, that same day, the letter finally came in the mail from the doctor to the, that the motor vehicle had received a letter stating that she should no longer be driving. Well, now I had the pleasure of saying to her, I need your license because I have to take it down to the motor vehicle office. And I read her the letter, but their mind is not, is thinking that everybody's against them and that why should I do that just because they say I have to. I It's my license. I should be able to keep it. And I said, we have to turn it in. Otherwise, they'll come and arrest you or arrest me or arrest somebody. I said, we don't want to go to jail, do we? And she said, no. And of I said, course, she blamed the officer. Too. Yeah, and she, she did. She blamed the officer, thank goodness, because my brother had taken her to the doctor to try to get this letter. And fortunately, the um, police officer came between that and the letter. Otherwise, I would have been the blame because she lived with me. And you made me forget where I was going. Oh, gosh, you always do that. I'm sorry. See, I've got a mild case of forgetfulness. <laughs> um, oh, darn. Oh, darn. Where was I in my story? <sighs> Can you remember? <laughs> I 
<laughs> Here we go, everybody. Okay. I I don't okay. have the I have memory lapses, but I don't have Alzheimer's, as they say. At least I don't think I do. Of course, we all think we don't. Um, so she she ended up. Oh, I had to take her license. I remember. See, I remember where I left off. So I, we had read the letter to her, and I had to take the license down to the motor vehicles. And she says, "But I like my picture. Can I have my?" picture back? I said, I will ask them. So when I got there, I said, she really likes her picture. Is it? A, can she have her picture back? And they said that she could have her picture back, her, could have the license back. And what they do is they snip the corner off your license. So if you ever see anybody that's got a corner snipped off, that means you're not supposed to drive. So if she were to get stopped by the police with that license, they would know instantly that she was not allowed to drive. And so she got her picture back. Not many people like their picture on their driver's license, but she really had a really nice, she used to take a good picture. She was a really uh, an attractive lady. So um, then you go to, after that, well, we'll just move on to the next stage. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they have difficulty counting. We're still on stage six. They have difficulty counting. And one of the tests that they do is they want you to try to count back from 75 to seven. Instead of starting at 100, they have you start at 75. And if you can do that, then you're okay, I guess. If you can't do it, if they find it difficult to add and subtract. She, I remember my mother helping her cousin over the phone, and she couldn't understand how come her cousin couldn't add and subtract. They were doing her checking book, and she was helping her to balance it. And she just could not get understand why this lady's name was Grace, why she could not do her um, checkbook. My mother felt, said it was so easy, and it was at that time for my mom, but then later on, when I would be filling out checks, she says, I don't know how you do that. It's like I was doing something really fabulous by just writing a check. They have um, sometimes personal emotional changes and confusion and anxiety, suspiciousness. She was very suspicious became very if she lost something you took it if you found it ah that's where you hid it so if she had lost like the remote to the tv and she'd lost her purse she used to carry a little purse to church and she would put like one or two dollars in it because she always wanted to give to the church and she would put it somewhere because she was afraid somebody was stealing her stuff then when she couldn't find it, she knew somebody must have been taking it or somebody must have moved it because she always knew where she put her things. But she was moving them all the time, so you didn't know where they were. And then if you found it, heaven help you, you were the, you were the culprit, you were the one. And so you just kind of try to distract from that moment. Um, a lot of times if you can distract, move on to something else and make them feel useful like old washcloths or like we used to do the um, word search and she used to think that was the most fun thing to do to do the word search because it felt like it was very important and it was important for her to do. Then you go on to save stage seven. Stage seven is really where you know they have this um, Alzheimer's it's very, they're severely cognitive impaired. They can't even draw a clock. If you asked her to draw a clock, the clock would be, may not even be in a circle and may not even have hands on it. And the numbers will be all over the place. They won't, it won't even resemble a clock. They don't know their name. They don't know their children's names a lot of times. And she used to say to me, how many children do I have? And I'd go, you have six. And she'd go, ah! <gasps> Six. And then two seconds later, how many children do I have? And she'd go, ah, six. And then she'd want to know how many grandchildren she had. And I'd say, you have 12. Ah, 12. And then she'd ask you again. And it was like, you repeat, you repeat, and you repeat, and repeat. And she, every time you tell her, it was like, ah, wow. Like it's news, new news. And it really wasn't new news. It was just told two seconds ago. They start to where they can't swallow, and so a lot of times they'll put thickening stuff into the drink to help them to drink it because 
they choke real easy on liquids and they may need help in feeding. They cannot feed themselves anymore. They probably can't dress themselves anymore and they probably don't walk around very much or can't sit in a chair without something supporting them. And these are the things that happen as you progress into the Alzheimer's stage of the disease. It can be very trying for the people watching them. You will feel like you don't have any life after a while, especially if nobody else is helping you. It's important to have help. And I found that even though I'm a family of six kids, there was a family of eight total, but six kids, they might come around for an hour and then that hour was just enough to disturb her so that I'd be called at two o'clock in the morning and she would want me to come down and discuss something that was eating at her. And I'd say, it's the middle of the night. And she goes, it is not. It's two o'clock in the morning. It's morning. So I'd have to go down. And then the next day I would go to work. And um, we also had where she'd say, nobody ever visits me. And um, so we ended up giving her a notebook that everybody, when they visited, would write in it. And a board that you'd write on the board stating that you were there and this and what time you were there so that she could we could say no it looks like somebody came they wrote their name on the board well that was fine except maybe you wrote their name on the board so yeah. but it was it was difficult and I remember the day I, she was like in stage um, the later stage of five going into six where it was really very hazardous to keep her here at home because she would wander and she'd forget how to get back home and she would she was walking she walked with two canes she had very bad arthritis and so she would want to go to a certain length certain distance but she could never make it back because her legs were would not work so it got to the point where I had to um, decide if I should place her into an, uh, an assisted living home. It was really very hard to get her into an assisted living home because once you have dementia, they want to put you into a dementia unit. And I knew she wasn't totally there, but she was not safe to be at home because we had taken, I don't know if I mentioned this, where we took the knobs off the stove. Mm -hmm. I probably didn't mention nope, it there. Mention we took the knobs off of her stove except for one burner because I'd come home and find that whatever she was cooking was was out of liquid, was burning, and my father would most of the, the time notice. It'd be just left on. It'd be left on and she'd go take a nap. <laughs> like you can't do that. My dad would notice it and my dad thankfully his memory and his mind was sharp as a whip, but his body was deteriorating where he found it very hard to walk. But he still would take care of um, these little things that if she did well, somebody wasn't there. And we did hire help to come in. And it was my daughter that we hired and she used to come to the door and the door would be locked. And so she'd tell me the door was locked and I'd say, go to my phone, call her and ask if you can come over and she'll let you in. And when she was to see her, she'd go, oh, it's you because she really was thinking it could be a total stranger or somebody else that she wanted to visit with not somebody that was going to sit there and talk to her and make sure she it was like she was being babysat and she kind of knew she was being babysat um I don't know if I thought of anything else if I think of anything else I will add it in another video this was not an uh, happy peppy go lucky video but it was an important one and I did mention a little bit about you need help whereas my family oh when it came time to move her I will go back to that oh excuse me when it came time to move her I had two of them that were in favor and three of them were against no three of them were a favor and two of them were against excuse me I had two that said that I should not do that cannot do that and I said, well, then you take her home. And they go, we can't do that. She'll get into our stuff, which is true. She would. And their, their spouse would not even tolerate it. And it's like, and mine is, I got to the point where when you're, when you're taking care of somebody, you're, you're on edge all the time, too. And I got to the point where I could hear this thump, shush, thump, shush. 
and that what it was is her feet walking and her canes her canes thumping and her feet sliding because she really didn't pick her feet up and I she'd shuffle yeah and I used to say to Jim is she coming and he'd go no there's nobody there so after a while my mind was thinking she was coming because I was always on call constant with her and the others really they came but very little they your, came very your, little very your children did more than my own sometimes. children I had my when we wanted to go camping my son would stay here with them and um the one time I called my brothers to come because I was afraid she'd follow us out of the driveway. So they had to stay here until we left to make sure that she made it back into the house. And um, my son stayed with her. And that was the way it was. So if you can get help, all the better. Well, so that's it for tonight. And if somebody else needs but, help, help help yeah don't 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 think it's just because they are the one that's the main caretaker that main caretaker needs a break every now and then too so and it would be nice to give them the break so we'll talk to you again tomorrow have a great night i'll see you then bye